Welcome to the Nature Journal Workshop. Today we are looking at animal gates. And so gates are the different ways that things walk. When we think about human gates, um, you think of sort of run, uh, sort of walk, run, jog, these sorts of things. What we're, a human being is doing kind of the same thing and just going faster. And at a certain point kind of goes from a kind of fast walk um, and you get a little bit more bounce in it. And now we're running or jogging. But with animals with four on the floor, it is a little bit more interesting and it's a little bit more complex. But when you wrap your idea, your head around a few key ideas, your ability to get legs accurately drawn on critters in the field goes way up. So let's, let's start with um, what I want you to do. Oh, actually, I just got that paused. Right, I'm going to show you a little video. And... Um, uh, extra bonus points, by the way, if you can identify the horses in the video. But what I want you to do is, um, it's going to be a video of some horses running. And as you're seeing this, what I'd like you to do is to see if you can make just a quick sketch of what you see of what exactly are the le horse's legs doing. Um, in so, so to try to kind of capture a pose or a few poses that you actually see here. Are you ready? So we're going to give this a quick try, and here we go. Got to go fast because horses run fast. All right. Um, my mama's favorite horse. Um, can if if you know the name of the horse who just won the race, um, you get bonus points and uh, put that into the the chat. If you know the name of the horse that uh, was beaten, even more, um, you uh, you you win a prize. I actually don't have a prize, but see if you 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 know those. So um, did you catch those leg positions? Yeah, um, not so much, right? So what you're basically seeing is there's a jockey on top and the bottom part is doing this. Right. So those legs are moving faster than your eye can really perceive. So it's not that it's a bad video, which it is, right? It's also that when those horse legs are moving fast, there's, there's so much information. What are all those legs doing? And they're also moving so fast that it's a total blur. You can't do it, right? And it's not because you were lo not looking hard enough. Um, here's just sort of a, the, kind of the backstory on drawing horse legs. Um, this is George Stubbs. He is widely known as the master horse drawer. Um, and um, he's also, I think, should be known as the worst tenant to ever have in a rental property. Um, so he was a master horse, horse artist. And, um, and uh, one of his, uh, sort of the way he got so good is that, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, his, sort of his, if you look at a bunch of his art, you know, a lot of it is, uh, you know, beautiful paintings of horses and um, English aristocracy. So they were his patrons. They, these are the people who would pay for these, these horse drawings. And so those are um, the, 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 the drawings that, 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 that you would have. So um, what's, what's interesting, you look at a bunch of these drawings and there's, you know, beautiful, beautiful details of these horses. The reason, by the way, and, and, and let's also kind of just I want to zoom in just for a moment on just sort of these are horses that he's drawing in motion. Now, this is somebody who studied horses rigorously, rigorous, rigorously. Now, and the reason why he's uh, sort of part of this, this training is that what he did is he rented a house and got a dead horse and hung it from the rafters of the rental property and then dissected the entire thing over a matter of months while uh, he and uh, his uh, common-law wife were, were living in the house. 
And um, he did, as he dissected it, he did these, these drawings that kind of go through all the deep and superficial anatomy of the horse. So did this guy know horses? Oh, you bet he did. And these, these studies that uh, Stubbs did for years after were like the go-to source of anybody who wanted to draw horses. They would look at these studies by, by Stubbs, right? So, but when he's drawing horses running around, this is what he's drawing, right? So this, you look at all of his running horses, look at those ones in the background. Everybody has got this rocking horse position. And it's a very exciting dynamic pose. Um, and so I think that's a reason that he liked it. He also, with the best, to the best of his knowledge, this is what horses were doing when they were running. And he spent a lot of time watching running horses at the track, you know, at any, anywhere he could. He would watch these horses and do his best. This is the pose he came up with. So here's the kind of the cool thing. In spite of all this work and all this, this stuff in your rental property, there is no pose anywhere in any gate of a running of, of a horse that is doing that rocking horse position. They never do that. They never do that, all right? And so, but if you're just trying to look at the blur and make your best guess, it's a reasonable guess. So um, it wasn't um, until this guy came along. This is um, Edward Moybridge. And um, he got the idea of setting up an array of cameras and have a horse run across it with little strings. You trick, uh, uh, trip the cameras and click, 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 click. And you would get a series of photographs of a running animal. And he started with horses and dogs and things like this. Towards the end of his life, he kind of went off the deep end. And if you want to kind of see some very weird photography, look at the photographs from uh, Moybridge's later life. Um, but he, um, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the teaser, right? But he, he was able to get these sort of things. And you look there, there's no, there's no rocking horse in there. There's a point where the front legs are out. There's a point where the back legs are out, but there's no point where the front and back legs are out. And so this, this was, this, this blew people's minds. Um, and so the result is since then, everybody who has been drawing horses and these sort of things, we're now looking at photo reference or slow motion videos to try to figure out what is actually going on. And so when you see an accurate picture of a dog running, this isn't done by somebody just sort of sitting there at the racetrack and kind of watching the dog run, run, run around or run around their yard. In order to get that accurate, you actually have to study some of the gates and, and, and learn about these. Now, here's the good news. You do not need, you do not need to memorize every one of these little poses, right? I haven't done that, you don't have to either. But what we want to do is get, be able to wrap our heads around some fundamental ideas of what is happening with these. And if we can see some of these, um, there's a few general rules which will help us remember enough to be able to draw stuff in the field and with a little bit of reference material be, to be able to really use that a lot more effectively. But we want to have a little bit of understanding of what is going on and some of the nuance of it. So this is the art, the science, of looking at animal gates. My favorite person, the person who I like, whose analysis of animal gates I think is the best, is Dr. James Halfpenny. Um, and I love his book, uh, Mammal Tracking in uh, Western America. It's not one of these books with lots of, of, of flashy pictures and things, but his scientific analysis of gates and track patterns I think is really, really useful. There is out there, in the world of tracking, actually a lot of misinformation about sorts of things that animals do with their feet and their, their, their legs and track positions. And this guy does a lot to correct those. Um, so uh, do check out um, his stuff. But I wanna, um, drawing on his research, we're gonna be taking a look at some fun with animal gates. Here is a useful little diagram. Um, on the left-hand side, I've got walk, trot, lope, gallop. Right, and um, these are different paces 
different ways of using the legs. And I've got them categorized into two groups. What I want you to do is I want you to think of the walk and the trot together as a unit. And I want you to think of the gallop and the lope or canter together as a unit. And we'll be looking at those separately. There'll be kind of very different things going on with those. The hops are just in their own little corner and we'll kind of deal briefly with the hops. Um, but so, you know, the way that a bunny is moving around, that's gonna be different than, than lots of other uh, sorts of things you see. So as you're going up this chart, the higher you get, the faster you're going. And the, um, and notice again that we've got the two groups, the walk trot and the lope gallop. We're going to start by um, walking the walk. And so here is a diagram of a horse walk. And what um, the easiest way to think of, a, of an animal walking around, this is the same thing that you do when you get down on all fours and you walk around the room. So I'm gonna turn my camera down here towards the floor. I'm gonna move this, all right? And um, so, um, Amelia, can you check to make sure that I'm, I'm kind of clearly in the, the view there in that, that, that uh, screen there? Oh, no, actually, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, let's go to, I'm going to jump up to this. I'm going to go to stop share. We're going to just kind of zoom in on, on me crawling around on my floor for just a second. Um, here we go. All right, so turn this down. All right, so if, maybe scoot that way just a little bit. So if I am, uh, I need to be this way a little bit more. All right, so if I'm crawling around on my floor, if I'm crawling around on my floor, um, what I'm doing is I've got four on the floor, my body leans forward, and then this back leg kind of comes up and Right before my, I'm going to try to put this foot down. This my knee here is my back paw, right? When I'm about to, when this is about to land, it's going to land basically where this hand is or a little bit in front of it. So this hand, you're going to see it get out of the way, right? So I'm coming here and get out of the way, clump, and then I land this. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to move this knee forward, and here I come, right, and land. Right, and then so right before I have to, uh, to to land the back foot, you're gonna see the front picks up and then it goes forward. Right, so that's that's the walk, and this is is done. This is done across all the different critters. So um, let's take a look at a few animals walking. And you'll sort of see, what you want to do is just watch that back foot. It's almost like the back foot is coming and kind of kicking the front foot out of the way, right? And um, I'm going to share a screen. All right, so here we are. All right. Um, Actually, so um, okay, there, there's where I wanted it to be. All right, so this is this is Moy Bridge's photographs of a horse walking around, and what you're going to see is that um, the 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 back foot um, comes forward and. It, so, so, you know, back, back here, you see this back foot leaving the ground just a little bit more before the front. It's going to come up and it wants to go into the, um, the place where the front foot was. All right, let's watch this horse walk around. So first not, notice that sort of the back one comes forward and then the front. Red pushes the white, white pushes the red. Red pushes the white. 
or, or here's they've got this um, verse. So you see them kind of one moves, then the other. Now I'm going to pause this for just a second. Um, what you want to um, also notice, whoops, notice here as we're doing this that as this, by the way, these are, I found this online. This is five minute um, horse um, videos. This is, wh whoever put these uh, five minute um, horse videos together, they're awesome. Um, so you can, there's actually, uh, it's worth everybody's while, while to kind of check those out online. The people who kind of made that uh, five minute horse uh, video uh, training series. Um, there's some useful stuff for us. I'm gonna borrow several of the little segments that they have to specifically highlight stuff that we're looking at, but it's gonna be worth everybody's time to check out their, their, their work. What I want you to notice is that the diagonal legs, right, the front and the back, the ones here that are in these little red stockings, they're going to move as also a little bit as, as a unit. You're going to see them move and while the white ones are posted. So these are diagonal legs. So in addition to that back one punching the, the other one out of the way, you're gonna see two legs posted on the ground. So in a, in a walk, there's always at least two, sometimes three legs posted on the ground. But watch how the red legs and the white legs, there'll be a time where the white legs are posted and reds are in motion, there'll be a time when the reds are posted and the white legs are moving. So let's just um, see that again. All right. White is posted, reds are moving. Reds are posted, whites are moving. So you see that the whites post, right? Um, here, they're, they're, they're uh, the, the, the colors are, are reversed, but the diagonal legs, they're white and a red, right, are moving together as, as a unit. Right? So watch the reds stay on the ground here. The, the whites are back. Now, now look at this. The whites too are down, diagonal down, was stretching out on the, the outside. So now the reds are posted down. The whites are stretching out in the front and the back. The whites are posted down, the red. So you're gonna have diagonal legs posting down and the ones on the outside of that stretched out. All right, so let's see if I can pause the video. All right, yeah, there we are. All right, so here, all right, so look at this. So we've got whites posted down and those are diagonal legs. And notice that we're stretched out in the front, in the back with the other two, the red, legs on that diagonal. So they're working as sort of sets of opposite diagonal pairs. You're posted, there's the posted ones that are moving. When you look at a single side, the back foot is coming and knocking the one out of the way in front of it. When you are looking at them all together, you're going to have two pointing down, right? And, and the other two in their motion forward. Two posted down. All right, so, so here you have two red ones posted down. So the red's posted down, the two white ones stretched. Now we're going to, here comes, now the two white ones are going to be posted down. And look at that stretch with the reds. So that's gonna be kind of a, a typical look. Right. Um, this is kind of fun. You can see this diagonal motion very clearly in the backup when the horse is backing up. They, oops, no, I don't want you. All right. Um, these same patterns you also are going to see in other animals. So if you look at a bear, watch it kick the front leg out of its way. See, it sort of kicks the front leg, boom. All right, then it gets snuggly with the ice. <laughs> this is just cute, All right? Um, but it, it's actually gonna walk again for you in a moment. And when it does, what I want you to do is see if you can see the back leg kick the front leg forward. And also notice that there's a point where you have two down in the middle that are diagonal and the other two are stretched out. So 
so cool. Thank you, uh, World Wildlife, for this awesome video, Save the Polar Bears, right? Now, um, so if I am, if I am thinking of, of how I am going to represent this, um, oops. I am thinking of how I'm going to represent this really, really quickly. I'm going to make a little walking horse doodle. Um, and there is, there's something that, also just one other thing we want to notice about this, this walking video. Um, and that is that there is, when there's a point when the legs are closer together, when it's two down and they're outstretched, it's this cool dynamic pose. There's sort of a less exciting moment that you're going to see um, when the legs are just sort of a little bit more hanging down. Um, so let me, I'm gonna jump back, share screen, and here it is. So here's this horse again. Um, we're gonna play it. And I'm going to actually pull it over here. Okay, so you know, let's check this out. So notice that sort of in here, this sort of part in here, right? You know, this, this is the sort of a, a nice clear dynamic pose, but kind of when we're in here, sort of more overlappy, this walking pose, this is a pose that we get in walking, but it's, the motion in it is, it's a little bit visually confusing. So what you'll see is people will tend to, when they're drawing a walking horse, they will either have this point right here with um, those where you're, you're seeing kind of the knockout on the inside there, or even better, a little bit more dynamic is this moment here where you have two legs posted on the ground and the others are outstretched. So if you're going to remember two poses out of the walk, I'd say this is one, right? And this little moment in here is the other, all right? So look at the negative shape between these horses' legs. See that? What I'm going to do in just a moment is I am going to also notice that the joint in the front is lower than the joint in the back. All right, so I'm going to now stop sharing, escape from that, and I'm going to go to my little cam, oh, document camera here. Um, and, 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 and check this out. Um, I have, If, if this is, is my, my body of my horse, or whatever critter I'm doing, clip-clop, clip-clop. Um, I can think of, here's just, I'm going to do a quick uh, doodle. Maybe make that a little bit more proportioned. All right, but if I'm wanting this to walk around, I can have this front leg coming down, the back leg coming down. And so, so this, these are, and then my, I'm gonna have another leg that is outstretched here, right? And another leg that is outstretched here. So this is, a walking position that is natural. Um, the legs that are on the side of the body that are closest to me are either going to be this one and this one, or this one and this one. So, but it's not, it's not that the legs on one side are outstretched, the others are close together. Remember, these are diagonal sets. So if I were drawing this, right, and I want this one to be the, the one that is, all right, if that one is coming down, then, um, oh, I just did exactly what I, 
<laughs> pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Um, the uh, so if if this one here, um, so this leg here would be the one that is coming out. So those would be the legs on the close side of the body. This leg here and this one here that is stretched back. And then my posting leg would be here. I'm going to do it all black. And the other leg Yeah. So could you push your page up just a little bit? <clears throat> Thank you. So what I've got is um, one leg, two legs posting, other legs out. So initially what I'm doing is just kind of remembering that I've, I've got this pattern. Here's my pattern. I have a body, I have two legs posting and two legs out, right? That's in a walking um, posture. And it's either going to be that this leg that where here is the leg that is closest to you, right? And here is the leg that is, so this is the one on this side of the body, right? With those other two being the ones in the back, or it could be the other way flipped around. So as it walks, those will just alternate. The other walking position, if this is my body, um, it's going to be when I am on one side, I'm going to have these ones here. I can have that knockout position where I am, where one foot is coming forward and the other one is getting out of the way of it. That pose in this case, this leg here is going to be the one that is on the side that is closest to you, right? And similarly, this one. And then in the back, I've got this guy flipping up, getting out of the way of this leg that is coming here. I personally think that this one right here is a little bit more of an exciting dynamic walking pose. This one feels a little bit tight, right? But let's just look back at that video of the walking horse and I'll show you again. We'll say like, here's the tight one. Here is, here is the, um, uh, here is that sort of open, open one. So let's share. Uh, play. All right, so here. All right, hold on. I'm gonna have to get control over my screen. Here we go. All right. Come on. It's not wanting to cooperate. All right. So here we here I go. So here is here is there it is. There, there's that kind of open dynamic pose that a walking pose sort of two on the ground they're diagonal so those red ones there are diagonal legs those white ones um those ones are also diagonal there's there's that kind of that open pose and then here is that kind of more closed one where we're kind of kicking we're kicking the uh, the front, I need to go down in there, so please get out of my way, right? Right, so it, it just, this, this pose, this is also a reasonable walking pose, but you'll see because the legs are overlapping a little bit more, it can get a little bit visually confusing for the person who's looking at your drawing. When you get up to this sort of a thing where the legs are really, those front ones are really overlapping each other, this kind of overlap causes a lot of visual confusion. So I don't recommend that. Similarly, on the back leg, this sort of a moment in here, visually confusing. 
right? Because there's so much overlap going on, um, I would tend not to draw that pose because the um, people are going to be like, what's going on with this three-legged horse? Right? So either this or even better, that moment. And that is, that's, that's, that's how we walk the walk. And as we saw, we see this in the, the polar bear walking around. If you look for it, you can sort of see these same moments in that polar bear. And the same is true with your dog. <laughs> right. As the dog is coming by, it's doing that same thing. As it comes forward, the back foot is kicking that front one out of the way. See that back foot comes up. I want to be there. Usually three feet on the floor. And then that other one is just kicking you out of the way. Then back to three feet, I'll kick it out of the way. Three feet on the floor, kick it out of the way. Three feet on the floor, kick it out of the way. That is the walk. All right, so um, there's, there's a lot going on here, right? Um, this, is, this is some pretty intense stuff. Um, and so what I do is I carry with me, and I'll share some of this stuff with you in a, in a moment, I carry with me some little reference cards that have pictures of animals' legs positions just to remind me of some of these key elements. Let's, um, so again, here is, here's, um, here's, here's Moybridge, um, some of his photographs. And here what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the trot. So, um, so in the trot, there's, it's also a diagonal gait thing going on, but it is, let, let, let's, this is where we actually, it's going to help to um, see me trot around the room or actually trot in a stationary place. I, I brought into my office here, um, my trotting bench. Um, so I'm going to go over to my trotting bench and I'm going to show you how I trot. And um, in doing this, you're going to see um, the kind of some, some, some fundamentals of what is happening with those, those leg positions. Before we do, just remember that those legs were kind of had a diagonal unity to them in the previous, um, in, the, in the walk. So remember those, those red legs kind of worked as a unit, those white legs worked as a unit. And it's going to be the same thing here with the, um, with my trotting bench. So let's go over to my trotting bench. All right, so this, this is my trotting bench. Right. So I'm going to move it this way a little bit. All right, now, um, what's going to happen here? I'm going to enlarge the screen so I can see what's going on on what you guys are seeing. All right. Um, if I were a marionette, right, if I were a marionette and I tied a string from this hand to this knee, right, so see how those move together and you see how these move together? I move these, I move these, right? That is the motion of the trot. So these two, whoop, no, I'm doing it wrong. So this, it has to be diagonal, this hand, this knee. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what I want. So it's kind of like, you know, this thing. Um, it's a little bit confusing to do. I need to go diagonal hand. So this hand, and try this at home, right? This is your chance to kind of get up and stretch a little bit. We're going to do, we're going to do the trot. Um, and ooh, I, actually, we can even see on the screen who's actually trying the trot. Diagonal hand, diagonal knee. Move those together. Move these ones together. Move these ones, these ones, these ones, these ones, right? And so that is your trot motion, thump, thump, thump. So what's happening, if I go to my trotting bench, right? Um, this paw, this knee, they come forward together while 
these ones are, the others are back. And so then they switch, all right? So look at this. When I do this, notice that this leg and this uh, forefoot have come together while the others are extended. Now, right, the other ones, now you're looking at the side where they're all apart. Now they're together, right? So what you're seeing is alternating legs come together in the middle. Alternating legs come together in the middle. So you're seeing these ones come together, these ones come together. These ones come together, these ones come together. These ones, that is the trot. And so, and in between each one of these, when there's a little push off, you're actually popping off the ground. So if I, um, uh, let's see, all right, all right. here we go. Um, uh, no, it's not too hard to do with the pop. All right, I can't do the pop. Um, but that's the idea of the trot. So you're going to have the legs on your side coming together and the other ones being apart, then the legs on your side being apart, and the ones where you're seeing through underneath the horse or the doggy, right? You're seeing through, they've come together. So, and each time there's a little pop. So you're actually getting a little bit of suspension off the ground each time you do that. Let's take a look at a horsey doing this. And then we're also going to take a look at um, how to kind of get that down on your piece of paper. All right. Um, we're going to go to share the screen. All right. Um, so this is one of Moybridge, Moybridge's photographs. Um, and you notice that there is, you're kind of going along, there's, there's a kind of clear moment where two together um, on the far side, the legs that are closest to you are spread out like an arch, like a bridge here. The whole business is off the ground. At this moment, you're off the ground, right? And then um, you're going to, then it, then it reverses. It's going to be the opposite way, where the ones that are on the side closest to you are together. Let's take a look at a real beastie doing this, right? So here we are trotting, bump, bump, right? far side together. Now, also, it's fun to notice in this, another way of thinking about this is that the white legs, those diagonal legs, they're, watch them move together as a unit. First, just not notice that the, either the red legs are forward or the back legs are forward. Whoops, nope, there you go. So white, now red forward. Now we're gonna go white forward. Now we're gonna go red forward. Now we're gonna go white forward on both. So those are the diagonal legs. It's not one side or the other. Um, now, here is, hold on a second. I'm supposed to be able to, there we are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna back up my horse and, and get it to, to pause where I want. So um, notice that this, po this point right in here this is visually confusing. This is a whole lot of overlap, and it looks like your horse is just kind of standing there doing who knows what, right? This is still visually confusing, right? So the moment in the trot that is the clearest is right in here. The moment in the trot is then we're gonna come forward. That's kind of a cool thing where those uh, diagonal ones are just a little bit off the ground or extended, right? So if you are going to draw a trot, you want this or perhaps this. Of course, you can draw legs in any position you want, 
but just realize that the more that you get them overlapped, the more confused the people who are looking at your drawing will be, right? Because here you're trying to say like, what is going on with these legs? And you want to kind of get this sense of motion. This, because the legs are all pointing down, the whole thing will feel more static. Again, this is from those wonderful five minute horse lessons uh, that you can find on YouTube. So I do recommend you checking those out. So let's just watch this one trot around a little bit and watch those come together. Clearly, you've got two legs, white ones forward, then you get red legs forward. So, um, let's now go over to the um, I'm going to go over to the to my little cam here, and uh, where exactly is the pop? Um, so the, the, the point at, at, at which you've got those two together and um, sort of at that moment you are off the ground, it is, it is right, actually I'll, the easiest way to show you where the pop is would be in, by looking at some of Moybridge's photographs and we'll do that in just a moment. Um, but first I wanted to, to show you um, a, go back to this view. This was all walking. If I'm trotting, all right, if this is my, my trotty body, um, I'm going to have, right, so two legs are forward and two legs are back. And then we can just make this, um, make these into things that sort of feel a little bit more like, like horsey legs. The front legs stay straight. And the thing that's kind of cool about the, the, the walk is that it's going to be this leg here and then my belly comes back like this. And then there's going to be this leg back here. So the legs on the same side are, are making that, that arch. And the far side legs, I'm going to put those shaded. Those far side legs are the ones that are on are coming together. So you'll have one set doing the arch, the other ones coming together. And it could be that the ones that are closest to you are doing the arch. Right. I mean, the ones that are closest to you are, are doing the are, are close together. So it could be this same thing flipped. But um, that is that's your basic trot. So I So there, there's a lot going on here. This seems like super like anal retentive getting into the weeds of all of these leg positions. You say, I just want to draw myself a horse, right? So um, there is there's nothing wrong with you see an animal running and if its legs are a blur, you draw in a blur, right? So you could have, here's the back and it's running, and then there's, there's dust and there's some leg motion going on in there, but you just get really non-specific down below. That's a great way of handling drawing running critters. But if you do want to kind of lock in a leg position, having these ideas in your head um, is, is going to be, be helpful. And what's going to happen is already, there's too much to, 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 to remember. How many people agree? Um, that there's, there's too much to keep in your, give me a few hands, anybody else? 
right? Right? So there's, there's already too much to remember. That's why the cheat sheet is going to be really handy, right? A little bit of practice. And then what I do is I will show you what I use as a cheat sheet, and I've got it as a free download from my website, right? There is a Gates cheat sheet, right? Um, so you can take that, you can put it in the back of your journal, and then, whoop, right, you can be like, oh yeah, these little things. I'm going to be revising that at some point in the foreseeable future, but there's so many other things going on right now that I haven't had a chance to. But um, the cheat sheet doesn't do you any good unless you kind of get a conceptual understanding of a few kind of key ideas, right? Oh, Melinda, did you just post a, uh, a, a link to the cheat sheet? I did, I did, I've been posting links to everything you've talked about. Oh, thank you so much, thank you so much. Um, see, Melinda's got my back. Um, I also really want to uh, encourage people to check out the classes that she's doing in this new um, nature journaling series that she is uh, starting with the Pacific Grove uh, Museum is gonna be really, really high percentage, really, really worth our time. So check that out. So thank you very much, Melinda. All right, so this is the first, these are the first set of gates. We've done the walk, we've done the trot. We haven't touched the, um, the lope or canter and the gallop. Um, what we're going to do is I'm gonna do a little bit more on, on this and then on Tuesday, we're gonna, I'm gonna do part two. If you miss Tuesday's class, um, I will record it and I will post it, but rather than do a speed version through the gallop and all that sort of stuff, speeding through the gallop. Rather than, 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 than speeding through the gallop, what we're going to do is just spend a little bit more time, just tighten the screws a little bit on this, on, on these, these, these first gates, because we've just got a few more minutes here. All right? Um, on Tuesday, we're going to get into those higher speed, um, those, those higher speed gates. I'm going to jump back here and there was our friend the bear um, and hit play. So this is um, some Moy, Moybridge photographs of a trotting draft horse. Um, and so um, in that, you'll see that there's, there's two on the ground right here. And in the next screen, sort of right in this, right um, for this, just as this leg and this leg, they're getting to be a little bit more extended, these two feet are going to push off. So these legs are, are loading and they're pushing off. You see that they are off the ground here, right? So it's right before this moment of full spread, full spread, that you are going to have your Someone's saying, where is, does that pop take place? Just to kind of review, both of these gates, the walk and the trot, have a strong diagonal element. Um, as you are um, looking at the, the, the horse walking around, we had that horse moving the red legs and the white legs as units. So they're, they're not, they, they kind of leave the ground at a slightly different time. Well, actually, I'm gonna, this, this one, the, the, the colors are reversed on the, on the legs, so I'm going to jump past it. Okay, here we go. So on this guy, Um, notice that there's a time when the whites are posts, the reds are extended, 
And then there's a time where the uh, reds are posts and the whites are extended. If you were just to take a look at the silhouette of the horse in this position, it looks a lot like um, it looks a lot like what we were seeing with um, the the trot, right? Where you had um, two on the outside, and um, then um, things kind of coming together on the inside, right? So remember when we had the arch. All right, so let me kind of go on this side. So you can see here, oops, no, yours, ah. I need to figure out how to manage these, um, these a little bit better. So when I, the difference here um, is that these legs are really not as extended as, as, as much. My two legs on the far, and the legs are also not moving quite as synchronously. So with that trot, there's kind of clear, you're moving one unit the other. In these, the back leg comes first on one side, and then it, it's going to kind of pop. So that there's the white ones, they've got the same ground down time, but there's a notice how long I've got three feet on the floor, three feet on the floor. Just as that top front one comes down, now this next one is coming up. Look at this. I've now got three feet on the floor again. I'm going to move one leg. I've got three feet on the floor. I move one leg. I've got three feet on the floor. If I compare that with the trot, right? Oops. Ah. Compare that. <clears throat> See if I can do it this time. Uh, here I go. All right. Now, as I compare this with the trot, um, here I go. I have two feet on the ground. And then Two feet on the ground still. I at the sort of there's a sort of pop moment. Now I'm lifting the other two up. And right here, I'm, I've, I've got full pony liftoff, right? So I've popped my pony up. That's the part where if you're riding a horse that is trotting, you've just been bounced. Um, so if you've ever been on a trotting horse, it's bounce, 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 bounce. So that is the, so I'm going off the ground, I'm bouncing you up, and then two feet on the ground while I am swinging this forward. So that as I, as I go faster and faster, the number of, the, the amount of time that I am suspended in the air is going to be increasing as I go faster and faster. And you can think of the same thing with you walking. When you're walking, you know, you've always got one foot on the ground. As you start to uh, go faster and go into a run, there's a point where you are lifted off the ground. We're going to see as we go faster into the other gates that there's more of a suspended moment. There's more of a point where you're off the ground. And in, as a matter of fact, we're going to get to the point where in a full on tilt, full tilt gallop, there's going to be two points where you're pop, popped off the ground. One when your legs are together, one when they are apart. Um, but for now, I want you just sort of to see the connection of these diagonal legs on these poses. I would like you to see that that you're going from more legs on the ground. So if you've got three legs down and you're just moving one, you're drawing a walk. Um, and um, that's going to be changing as we pop into our other gates. So in my, um, 
in my, 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 my dreams, um, we actually went all the way through to the gallop in this first session. Um, but a few minutes into it, I discovered uh, we weren't going to be able to get there. I chose to, um, I, I, I chose to just to, to do the walk and the trot with a little bit more focus. On Tuesday, we'll get into the the canter, the lope, the the gallop. So we'll be going really, really fast with our legs. And um, but between now and Tuesday, excuse me. Um, but between now and the next time we meet, what I would like you to do is to um, is to to give yourself a chance to play with um, to play with these ideas to find some either video reference that you can stop or a photo reference of a horse in a walking or, or, or a trotting position. The best case scenario would be to go on YouTube and find some videos of horses walking and horses trotting. You can just do horse trot video, right? And then um, control it with your cursor so you can make your horse go in different positions. Draw a few walking poses. And when you do those, much as we've done here, come up with a different way of coding the legs that are on the close side and the far side. So one good way of doing that is that the legs that are further away from you, put those all in shadow. All right? And the legs that are on the side closest to you, don't shadow those legs, have those be outlined. So that when you're looking at your drawing, you're making a clear distinction for yourself of which legs are on the close side, which legs are on the far side. Do that where you're kind of moving the um, sort of the insertion point of your video. Do that for some walking gates for at least two drawings. And do that for some trotting gates for at least two drawings. So four horse leg positions, right? And, 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 and play with those. And then you're going to color code that you can also do it with color. Like you can have the ones in front the, on the side closest to you be red and the ones on the other side be blue. Either way works. But if you do that, it'll take these ideas and give you a chance to cement those so that these gates will be much less mysterious. The final thing that I'd like you to do is I would like you to just watch some videos of horses walking around and see if you can start to kind of notice some of these key poses in the moving animal to remind you. You also may want to download the video, that, uh, sorry, the, uh, the, the handout that I have on, it's uh, the, the free handout on drawing um, uh, on, on animal gates. There will be an update of that probably sometime this month, um, but for now you'll find that it is is really useful. Melinda's got it up on the chat as the as the Gates cheat sheet. And that's that's what I use. Frankly, I can't keep all this straight in my head, but I find when I kind of go over the fundamentals and then have the cheat sheet to look at, I can look at that and kind of be like, oh yeah, okay, I got it. I know what's going on. All right. That is Gates part one. Join us Tuesday for Gates part deux.